Our top story this Monday morning, we are talking about reopening because now every Oregon County is now either in phase one or re of reopening or has applied for it. And there is one exception, Multnomah County. Over the weekend, Washington County applied to enter phase one and leaders there hope to start reopening a week from today. That is June 1st. As for the timetable in Multnomah County, well, leaders still not saying when they would apply for opening. On Saturday, Clackamas County received approval to enter phase one of reopening, and that allowed businesses to start operations during this holiday weekend. So now restaurants, bars, salons, barbers, gyms, and fitness centers are welcoming back customers with safety precautions. And the sudden announcement left some businesses scrambling to get open. Just been uh, waiting, thinking that we were probably a, a good week to maybe two weeks out, but we're excited to get started. Um, we're still trying to clean up. We're still trying to get move some stuff for the flow uh, to work, but we're, we're excited and ready for business. Yeah, a lot of things to think about. Clackamas, like every other Oregon County in phase one, had to meet certain prerequisites, like a decline in COVID cases, have enough PPE for healthcare workers, and set up a contact tracing system. Okay, now to Washington. Clark County's application to enter phase two of reopening is on pause this morning, and that's because health officials are investigating a COVID outbreak at a frozen fruit processing plant in Vancouver. At least 38 workers at Firestone Pacific Foods have tested positive. The plant has shut down for a full week now. We're also tracking another cluster of cases, this one at a pasta making factory up in Spokane. At least 31 employees at the Philadelphia Macaroni Company have tested positive for the virus. This Spokane factory has also been closed for a week now. Local officials there say contact tracing is underway. Anyone who tests positive is going to be going into self quarantine. There's a new development in the legal battle over Governor Kate Brown's emergency coronavirus orders, and this stems from a case where a judge in Baker County ruled the orders were null and void. And now the Oregon Supreme Court is giving that judge until tomorrow evening to explain why that ruling should stand. Our Art Edwards spoke with legal, legal experts to help break down this developing situation. The Oregon Supreme Court issued an order Saturday in the battle over Governor Kate Brown's stay home order. We turned to a law professor at Willamette University College of Law to explain. They are asking Judge Shirtcliffe from Baker County to explain his decision again, and then they will look at that explanation and decide if they should get rid of the preliminary injunction that he granted or let it stand. Baker County Judge Matthew Shirtcliffe has until Tuesday at 5 p.m. to respond. He originally granted an injunction on May 18th that declared many of Governor Brown's orders null and void, saying they exceeded their 28-day limit set out by state law. The state Supreme Court issued a stay of Judge Shirtcliffe's ruling that same day, meaning the governor's executive order still stands. Now it's headed for the next step in court, and legal experts say things could move forward quickly. So the court's going to have sort of all of the arguments in hand by the beginning of uh, the week after Memorial Day. Um, and the next interesting question will be whether or not the court decides to, to uh, hear oral argument in the case or if it just decides to proceed and consider the arguments uh, on the briefs. An attorney for Common Sense Oregon represents several churches that are part of the legal case. Kevin Mannix says what the state's high court has done is choose a middle ground. Jeff Dobbins, a law professor at Willamette University College of Law, says the legal challenge of the governor's stay-home order is not a surprise. That there was certainly a level of frustration that was being articulated by people like the plaintiffs in this case, uh, and so uh, it wasn't surprising at all to see them uh, uh, mount the challenge that they did in Baker County. Governor Brown's restrictions will stay in place, at least for now. The state Supreme Court may ultimately decide if they stay that way. Art Edwards, KGW News. Today, of course, is Memorial Day, which a lot of people recognize as the unofficial start of summer. And since restrictions have been easing up around the country, millions of Americans took the opportunity to get out and do something over the weekend. That led to scenes like this all over the country. Take a look. People crowding boardwalks, beaches and bars. 
These scenes gave health officials some reason to worry. And their biggest concern, they say, is people who have the virus but aren't showing symptoms. So they're still calling on all of us to continue social distancing and to wear face masks in public. We now have excellent scientific evidence of how far droplets go when we speak or just simply talking to one another. President Trump plans to spend his Memorial Day honoring war heroes at Fort McHenry in Baltimore. That plan, though, goes against the wishes of Baltimore's mayor, who asked the president not to come, saying his visit contradicts the city's stay home order. Here in Oregon, Seaside and Cannon Beach are set to reopen hotels and short term rentals tomorrow. They both decided to wait until after the holiday weekend, trying to keep too many people from heading to the coast. So that begs the question, how was the coast the last couple of days? Well, this was yesterday in Seaside, where it was hard to find a parking space at times, but business owners there had some good news to share, saying most of the visitors they saw tried to be as safe as possible. The parking lot by our convention center was pretty packed. I'm seeing a lot of families in town, um, people excited to just get back out on the beach. They're being pretty good on the beach, I think, socially distancing. Everyone we've had in the shop so far has been very respectful of rules. So this is how the Sunday market looked in Astoria. Usually it's packed with vendors and shoppers, but yesterday was definitely a little slow. Astoria's mayor says that's a good thing. The parking lot by our convention center was pretty packed. I'm seeing a lot of families in town, um, people excited to just get back out on the beach. That was not Astoria's mayor. That was the same young lady we heard from a moment so ago. Has- oh, there she still is. Uh, you get the point. Things were definitely slower in Astoria yesterday than you would typically see at their Sunday market. As far as traffic along Highway 101 over the weekend, definitely steady, but traffic did keep moving. So if you're planning to get out and about today on Memorial Day, here's some quick info on what's open right now and what's still closed. Silver Falls, Smith Rock and Tryon Creek State Parks all open, but with restrictions. So you can check the Parks Department website for the latest on that. Other state parks are still closed, including some of the most popular spots and hiking trails in the gorge like Multnomah Falls. Trails up at Mount Hood also still closed and camping is not allowed anywhere in Oregon right now. In Washington, camping is allowed in counties that have entered phase two of reopening, but even there it's limited to small groups. The Portland Rose Festival had to cancel all of its in-person events this year, but they didn't completely throw in the towel. The festival moved some of its celebrations online. This past Friday would have been the opening of City Fair along the waterfront, but the Rose Festival still held a virtual concert and fireworks show that night. And then on Saturday, instead of a street parade, people held what they called a parade from their porches. They decorated their front steps, they decorated their windows, the sidewalks. It was something to bring people together while we're all still staying safely apart. It's just allowing people to walk around their neighborhoods and see the spirit of Rose Festival. Uh, The festival experience will come back in a traditional way, but since it can't right now, we'll create a festival experience and evolve our traditions differently, which is exactly what we're gonna do. This year's Rose Festival experience will culminate with a virtual grand petite parade. It's gonna feature shoebox sized floats That parade will stream live online on Saturday, June 6th. For now, you can check out some of the porch parade displays for yourself with a socially distant walk or a socially distant drive. Decorations will be up until this coming Sunday. You can find out where exactly those displays are by going to paradinginplace.com.